And can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Welcome to the John Clarence Show, me. John Clarence, it's great to be here, my friend. My great to be here. Yes. How do you start as an actor, theater actor? How do I what? How do you start as a theater actor? How do I start? Yes. My goodness. Um, well, first of all, you've got to love what you do. You really have to love what you do. And you have to have some kind of uh, stupid, stupid notion that uh, you don't want to work for a living. And you think that um, if you continue to do what you love, then you'll never work a day in your life. And that's what I do. That's, it's just something that happened naturally. You know, I, I never planned uh, to be a theater actor. Uh, it just sort of happened by accident. I was actually at university in Sydney, at Macquarie University, studying mass communications, doing film production. And uh, I was wanting to earn some money in the weekends. And a friend of mine uh, came back from the weekend, had done a Coke commercial and earned so much money doing a Coke commercial. I thought, now that's something I want to do. Rather than working, I was working actually at a local movie house um, making popcorn <laughs> and making chocolate ice creams for, for people, selling candy at the candy bar. Um, and it just seemed a good way of making money. And one thing led to another. Before you knew it, I started getting um, auditions for other work. And one of my first professional jobs is I, was, I did this. I um, worked on a show called The Buddy, Buddy Holly Story. They were looking for a guy to play Richie Valance, the guy who sang La Bamba, if you know the movie La Bamba. And uh, so... I, I, you know, I didn't really have much theater experience except for what I was doing in high school. Um, and when I auditioned for this, and I, you know, I just had to sing La Bamba and just dance around. And for some crazy reason, they gave me the job. Um, when I did the show in Sydney, when I, an opening night in Sydney, the uh, producers of the London show were there, and they invited me on that night, on opening night in Sydney. Said, look we want to take you to London. Will you be interested in doing West End. in London, in the West End? Yeah. West End musical. And I, yeah. And so yeah. I said, okay, sure. Yes. So I was 21 years old and my first job, next thing you know, I'm flying to London, staying in a beautiful apartment and working on the West End. I did a, a Royal Variety performance for the Queen and Prince Philip. And so when I came back to Australia, um, People thought that I was this big music theater star because I had done work on the West End and I had done work, you know, did a royal variety for performance with the Queen. But in all actual reality, I, I haven't really done that much and I was really inexperienced. But it's the kind of thing that I started getting work from that. You know, in, in Australia, it's funny because if you do work overseas, I guess it's the same in the Philippines, it's the same anywhere. You know, if you do like the meccas of the musical theater is. London's West End or Broadway in New York. If you do some work on there, you're considered quite a big deal in, when you go back home. It, when in actual reality, it was just luck, pure luck that I was in London at the time and pure luck that I came back. I did a Royal Variety and I came back and work started to just come because of my reputation from doing the West End. And from that point on, I, I loved doing it and just worked. Just, I kept on getting job after job after job. I ended up leaving university because I, I found it hard to continue my studies while I was working at night, working at night doing theater shows. And at the day, I had to be at university. I just I was exhausted. So I decided to defer my studies and continue working as an actor until I found a break in the situation. Well, I never found a break. I just kept on kind of working, 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 and it's that's it. That's purely that's how I became an actor. Um, that's how I became a theater actor, and it just it just seemed to uh, be the right thing at the right time. Um, so that's it. Purely by accident. What is the difference? What is the difference of West End, Broadway, and theater in Australia? What is the difference of the three? 
That's a really good question. Really good question. Because uh, I think actually the quality of performances, for example, in uh, London and New York and Australia are actually very comparable. Very comparable. Uh, in fact, sometimes I will be possibly crucified for saying this, but sometimes I find that the theater shows in Australia, the quality sometimes are better <laughs> than what I've seen in New York and in London, purely why for this are, reason. Why are better? Purely for this reason, because um, w when shows come to Australia, we don't have the infrastructure, we don't have the lots of theaters, we don't have, you know, um, for example, in New York, it's a bit of an industry. They have like 50 theaters in New York and Broadway that are doing shows all the time. In London, there's like, you know, 45 theaters, whatever it is. I don't even know the number, but there's so many shows that are on all at the same time. And people go from show to show, from show to show. And sometimes the talent gets spread by all these, you know. And I, I find when I see sometimes, when I see shows sometimes in these places, I see the performers a little bit tired or a little bit nonchalant about where they are. And I, I, that's not all the time. It's just occasionally I go, well, oh, I didn't feel any excitement from seeing that show. But when I see a show in Australia, for example, there's not many shows that happen there, and so everybody tries to get into that show. And so they pool the best talent that gets into the one show. Even though the show isn't really very good, they have the best talent doing that show. And everyone's so excited and so grateful to be working that the work ethic is very strong and every night is an amazing experience. So, having said that, I've seen some much amazing shows on Broadway and on the West End, um, but that's the only difference I find in Australia that I think that uh, it's the quality of work, I think it's because of the enthusiasm, you know, I, I find that sometimes the work in Australia can be really, in some ways, I can say it sometimes a little better than what I've seen in in London and in the West End, uh, London and in New, in New York. Um, but I just wish that Australia had the same industry that New York has and and what London has because there's such amazing work that happens in the West End and in on Broadway uh, and some amazing stuff that never gets to Australia because they just don't have the theatre going. Uh, public, they don't have that industry that supports that kind of work. Uh, so that's why I moved to London and uh, eventually, even after I buddy and after working in Australia, I, I moved back to London and I found so much work there because of how much work is there. What is the purse? musical theater musical m musical theater or Broadway musical do you act what was the first one that i did yes well the first one that i did was the first professional show that i did was a show called the buddy buddy holly story i was 20 years old when i first started rehearsals for this and played the part of richie valance and i did it all over australia and in in london at the victoria palace theater in london so that was my first prof first professional job, but my first real real job, uh, my first uh, theater job, was when I was ten years old, and I played the part of Oliver, in Oliver, the musical we did at school, uh, and that was for me that was a really wonderful experience, and that made me fall in love with the theater, and uh, I fell in love with the theater at that point too because, not long before that. As a child, I had a stutter as a child. I like, had a speech impediment. I found it really hard to say some letters, etc. But when I spoke a line from a, a show or I sang, my stutter completely disappeared. So for me, it was a kind of therapy. But I also fell in love with being on stage and performing. And, and I, felt I, I was bitten by the theater bug very early. I saw you on YouTube in Rent. Do you perform in Rent in Australia? Because I saw you on YouTube, Rent, Rent yes. Musical. Yes, I, I, 
I did rent in several times actually, and it's one of my favorite musicals of all time. In Australia, I was in the ensemble for Rent, but I was also a cover for the part of Angel. Um, and when I was living in London, when I moved to London, they were launching a new production of, of Rent, and they were only casting people who had done the show before. So, uh, luckily, I had done the show in Australia, but um, they're, they're looking for the part of a guy who could, could do Angel. And when I I said, well, yeah, I can do that. And uh, when I auditioned in London, I did it, and uh, they cast me for Angel. And we did a, a, a short stint at the Prince of Wales Theatre in London. Um, and it was a, a magical experience. It's one of the most, most beautiful musicals I think I've ever been in. I think I remember when I was doing it in Australia, I found it really, really hard to get through a whole show without crying. Because, every, because it was such a powerful piece of music, such a powerful piece of theater. I remember um, we worked with a guy called Mark Ford, who unfortunately we lost a couple of years ago. Uh, Mark Ford passed away with a heart condition, but he played the part of Mark Collins. And uh, he was actually a man who had lost his lover because of AIDS um, when he was... When he was uh, uh, it was a long time ago, but when he was doing the um, "I'll Cover You" reprise, it was, it was Angel's funeral. It hit him like it was he was reliving, grieving for his lover. So every time he'd sang it, he sang it from the bottom of his soul. And I will never forget being on stage, listening to Mark Ford singing. Um, Live in my house, I'll be your shelter. It just ripped you apart. Um, and I found it like it took me about three or four months before I could actually do a show without completely losing, <laughs> losing it on stage with him. I love Rent. Great show. Do you love Rent? Yes. Yeah, it's a great show. Great show. Beautiful music. What about Pokemon in Dubai? I saw you on YouTube, Pokemon. You played the role of Ash. Yes, I played the role of Ash Ketchum in Pokemon the Musical. Um, that was really fun. That was really fun. I mean, to be honest, uh, it was a thing where I was asked, uh, would you be interested in doing the show? And I kind of thought, well, yeah, I'll go to Dubai. Sounds fun. But when I actually did the show, I didn't realize that the show was actually done um, at Radio City Music Hall in New York. It was a beautiful script a beautiful uh score the songs were fantastic you know it wasn't just a show for kids i think it was it was a really beautifully crafted piece of theater um and we had fun doing it i mean it it wasn't any shakespeare or anything like that but i really enjoyed doing the songs and and that cast that we took to dubai for a very short stint but still it was it was a one of my favorite jobs, actually. Funny enough, it was really great, really fun. How about your Filipino ancestry? Because I saw you on Wikipedia. I read your your biography in Wikipedia. Are you are Filipino? Yes. Yeah. I was born in Manila, in San Miguel. Uh, I was actually born in UST Hospital. Ah. My, both my mother and father were both born in the Philippines. Uh, all my grandparents were also born in the Philippines. My great-grandparents, though, um, I th they're from all over the place. Um, some were also born in the Philippines, but some were from Spain. I have ancestors from um, in my grandmother's family. She has uh, her family, Prezler, comes originally from Austria through to Spain, then to the Philippines. So I'm a bit all over the place. I'm a mestizo, I'm, uh, but you know, f I consider myself Filipino. I, was, uh, I moved to Australia when I, from Manila when I was two years old. I moved to Australia. And all my cousins are still in the Philippines. Well, most of my cousins are still in the Philippines. Uh, my uncles and aunts, my titos and titas are there. I try to visit as much as I can. I love visiting the Philippines. I have a wonderful time in there. I have incredible friends who I treasure. 
and I've done some work in the Philippines and every time I go back I just love it and I miss it I wish I could come back right now but unfortunately with this pandemic I'm stuck here in New York uh, in my apartment as you can see this is, actually I'll show you this picture this is me in a Times Square that's completely empty this that was at the the top the the start of the pandemic when no one was allowed to go out and everything like that and I snuck out and set up a camera and took a photo of myself in an empty Times Square because I don't know when the next time I'll see Times Square that empty it's very sad uh, Broadway is suffering very badly everything's closed um, a lot of uh, shows have completely closed um, it'll take a long time for the entertainment industry uh, especially Broadway to uh, come back to life it's sad it's sad um, but you know uh, there's nothing more important than health and keeping people safe and if people can't congregate right now together in close quarters then it's just we just have to do whatever it takes to get through this uh, so mm. you know what do you do what do you do you just keep on uh, doing whatever it takes to survive right John yes what about your musical I'm all out of love <laughs> with Tanya Man Manalang Tanya Manalang yes she's adorable and uh, uh, Rachel Alejandro Jamie Wilson uh, we had such amazing cast in that show. What um, is the story of the musical? I'm all out of love. What is that? What was the question? Sorry. What? What is? Story? What is the story of the musical? I'm What's all the out story? of love. Well, I gotta say, uh, I love Air Supply. Okay, I'm a huge Air Supply fan, and I was thrilled that um, Graham Russell and Russell Hitchcock from Air Supply came over to the Philippines to watch the show and they gave us their stamp of approval saying you guys are great and we love it we endorse this musical we'll give you the right to our music which was really what we had planned to do unfortunately I think the show needs to be developed a little bit further uh, but the show basically the story is there's this rock star uh, who uh, is about to launch his second album and he can't find the inspiration because he's so heartbroken from his girlfriend who has left him. So the, basically the, the story is about him trying to win back the love of his girlfriend. Uh, his girlfriend was actually the co-writer for all his previous hits. And so that's what, that's what the story is about and how he finds a way to bring her back and move her back. That's it in a nutshell, really. It's a love story. Uh, but... Uh, um, the music's great, and you know I think we did a great job in the in Philippines. We had a great cast. We had uh, Australian director, Australian producers, and Australian uh, uh, choreographer. Um, we had uh, pr other producers, Filipino producers, line producers as well. It had a lot of potential. I just think it still needs some development. So hopefully, I'll still be able to do it if it comes to another level of development. But yeah, to be spending three months in the Philippines uh, a couple of years ago doing the show was great. Spending time with my f family, uh, spending time at Resorts World, that was fun. And uh, you know, as I, t I, th I looked at upon it as like having a, being, having a three month holiday in the Philippines and uh, for that, I'm totally, totally grateful. In in Australia, there are many Filipinos, Filipino, Filipino immigrant in in Australia that became an actor. Do you know Kathleen De Leon? Yes, and I know Kelly Kathleen. Feli Erbin. Who? Sorry, Feli. Of course, I know Feli. Uh, First Feli of all, Erbin. Kathleen De Leon. Kathleen De Leon and I were in the original Australian cast of Rent. That's when I met Kathleen De Leon. But then she left early. She left the, the show early to do High Five, in which she became the original member, one of the original members of High Five. 
um, and Feli Irvin, of course, I know her because um, through association, but also we did a show called Thriller Live in Australia, and she was taken on board. I, it's a show that we did in London first, the music of Michael Jackson, and we did a world tour of it. We brought it to Australia and New Zealand, and Feli was part of that cast. But I knew Feli through friends before that. She is an incredibly talented singer, performer. Um, yeah. I think she's pregnant right now. She's about to have a baby, I think. Yeah. It's Flip been a while Simons. since I've actually spoken to her, so I need to, I need to get in contact. Flip Simons. Do you know Flip Simons? Flip. Of course I know yeah, Flip. He is a Filipino. He is a Filipino. An incredible singer. And he, 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 He's the creator of the Sexy Sunday Jam, uh, this band in, in, in Sydney, and they're funky as anything you've ever seen. And he is an incredible singer, performer. Uh, he, he runs a very tight ship. Um, Flip is amazing. Flip is amazing. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually very, very proud of all my Filipino connections. Um, um, I'm working now with a whole group of other Filipinos for two projects that I'm actually working on. Uh, there's a, a couple of film projects which I have been asked to write music for. Uh, one of them is called Cebu, which is based on a novel by Peter Bacho, a Filipino-American writer who wrote an, a novel called Cebu. Um, and I've been working on the soundtrack of that. We're still trying to get that to fruition, but we're also about to do a reading next week, a Zoom reading, for another film project called Payback in Manila. And it's a set, it's kind of like an Ocean's Eleven set in, you know, casinos in the Philippines. Um, and we've got a beautiful cast uh, set up. Uh, it includes John John Briones, it includes Natalie Mendoza, um, and a whole series of American Filipino actors. So I'm working on that with um, Virginia Travers from Luna Venture Films. And uh, hopefully we can get that to fruition as well. So I'm continually working with the Philippine artists. I'm continually proud of everything that they do. There's so much talent in the Philippines. And you know I, I was so excited when I went back to the Philippines when I, after Rockstar in Excess, when I went back and I saw all these bands that I didn't even know existed. Uh, I was totally blown away by the diversity of the music genre that exists in the Philippines. I didn't know Filipinos were such hard rockers for one thing, but it's true. Like They made me sound like Barry Manilow. They were so hardcore. Um, <laughs> but uh, I really do um, feel a sense of pride of being a Filipino, Australian, Filipino, American citizen, not a citizen, I'm a Filipino, uh, American resident. Um, but when I work with Filipinos in every level, I always find myself in awe of what I see. Before we end, we will watch a reaction video on YouTube. A reaction video? Yes. Okay. Do you see the YouTube? Do you yeah, see yeah. It? yeah. I can see it. Your screen the video we cool. will watch is a military parade. Do you know military parade? No. It's a it's, reaction video. Okay. It's in Ukraine. We will okay. react. We will react to the video. Okay. <laughs>
that you, John? Are you one of those guys? And and here is the tanks, the military equipment, the way. And the next is air show. There is an air show. Me, that that airplane was amazing. You know what that was? Very fast. And the next is dancing. This is the traditional dance of Ukraine. Okay. You will amaze. Ah, the Kazakhs. Tell they're all ballet trained.
crazy. What do you say about the video? I think those dancers are incredible. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a huge respect for dancers and uh, what they do, how they use their bodies. That is very would be very taxing. <laughs> on your, uh, I don't know. I'm 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 a huge fan of hard work, precision, and and uh, um, dedication. And I can see that. Like it's obvious that these people have worked so hard to achieve that level. So for me, that's incredibly impressive, spectacular. Mig, thank you for guesting to my podcast. John, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and I really do appreciate you reaching out to me. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to meeting you properly one day when this pandemic is over. We'll go and we'll have a drink together. Okay, John. Bye. John, take care, buddy. Salamat po. Salamat. Maraming salamat.